I give you already $1,500. Always you want more. More. What for you need so much? Look, Metro Victor, we're all through this. I don't like this, you understand? I don't like for to be made monkey. Where's my girl, you promise? Where's my bride, huh? One month, two months. All the time. She coming soon. She coming soon. I get angry now. No more money. No more money. You show me girl or I go to police. You hear that? I go to police. That's a victory. You go to the police and you lose not only your bride and your two front teeth, you'll be deported for plotting to violate the immigration laws. I'd be embarrassed to show your bride a bridegroom who needs a lot of dental work. Now you get the rest of that money up here, Pano, do you hear? Or things will happen. I'm Mike Kovac, photographer. A friend from the old neighborhood, Father Ehrlich, telephoned and asked me if I could help out a member of his parish. He said it was a delicate problem. It had something to do with love. I don't like to be pushed around, you understand? I don't make trouble. I'm a good citizen, Father, but I don't like to be pushed around. How'd you find out about this place, Mr. Metrovic? My name is Jan. They have how you call it, advertisement in all country paper. I called you in, Michael, because Jan doesn't want to go to the police. Why not? Are you afraid of these men, Jan? No, I no afraid. I want girl. Mr. Fowler tell me girl coming on board. I don't want the police to stop. Why would the police want to stop her? They told him at the marriage office that the quota for his country was full for two years. In order to get the girl into this country, they would have to make arrangements. They want money for immigration men, for ticket, for steamboat captain. Fifteen hundred dollars now. And you call yourself a good citizen? You know you're breaking the law? I am lonesome man, Mr. Kohek. American girls not like foreigner like me. Jan, my mother married a foreigner. Mr. Fowler say he try very hard to find American girl. Then he show me picture. Then letter from girl Anna to me, how she want to come and be my bride. Very pretty girl. I don't blame you much. Beograd, huh? It's Belgrade, capital city you call it. Belgrade. You know this street in Belgrade? Oh yes. How about the photography shop? It was the picture that made me think of you, Michael. You work with the police, you know how to do things like this. I persuaded Jan he would be better off to spend some of the money he has left for you to find out if there is going to be a bribe. Well, I don't expect you to work for nothing, Mr. Kovac. I pay you what I can. I'll tell you what, Jan. If I get your money back for you, you can pay me out of that. But if your girl gets here, you can invite me to dance at your wedding, okay? All right. I'm going to take this picture with me. But don't worry about it. I'll get it back to you. He nice man. I like him. A little steam would get the print off the backing. The supply companies were putting out new types of photographic papers these days. And I wanted to compare the paper of the photograph Jan Metrovic gave me with the type I had been using.
Fala inglês? Sprechen Sie inglês? Habla usted inglês? Well, maybe not, baby, but I got a hunch you don't speak Jan's language either. Yeah, I know the paper, Mike. Happens to have an embossment. It's a new one. It's good and cheap. Yeah, I'll bet it is. Well, some people like it. I haven't pushed it to you because it's not your type of stuff. If you want some of it, I can always order. How uh, long has it been on the market? Sid, what I really want to know is, is it possible a shop in Europe, say like in Belgrade, could be using this paper? No, I hardly think so. They get a lot of their stuff from Germany or Czechoslovakia. They develop a lot of papers over there. They import a few of ours. But no, I don't see how. This is only out a couple of months. Three, four at most. Mm. Okay, thanks, Sid. Hey, Mike, that's a beautiful gal. Yeah. I'm in the wrong end of this business. All I ever get to see is salesmen. Well, There's a the pretty one on the lot. Keeps you honest. Hey, that's good. She bugs me. I know I've seen her before. Yes, I have too. And yeah, not in Belgrade, I'll tell you that. <laughs> not unless they've changed the name of New York without telling me. Van, the reason I came to you, she might be a model. The way she holds herself. Well, she's not a top model, that's for sure. I've never used her. But, Mike, it's funny. I can hear her voice. I know I've talked with her. You think she might have been in here looking for work? Could be. Honey, bring me the file on the girls who've been in on interviews in the past, uh, oh, say, six months. Say, Mike, uh, <laughs> I didn't know you were the model chasing type. <laughs> a man with your reputation. Well, that's because I'm mercenary. I do anything for money, even chase the models. This girl in trouble? Oh, I don't know, but she's causing trouble for somebody else. Sad trouble. Thanks, dear. Oh, there are a lot of girls in this city, Mike. I don't want a lot of girls, just one. Yes, I know, but... Uh... Hey, how about this one? Yeah, that's her. Her name's Jane Cowan. She's brought in here by one of my regular girls, Joyce Whitman. Say, I remember her now. She's Joyce's roommate. Pixie face. Good figure. I wonder why I... Oh, I know now why I didn't use her. Why? She can't sit still. You know the type, Mike. A model has to take directions, not give them to the photographer. Where can I get a hold of it? That's a rush. No time's money. Honey, where's Joyce Whitman working today? Okay, honey, that looks pretty good. Let's see how the light is here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try that. See what we get here. Now hold it. Just a second. All right. Okay. That's a good one. All right. I just need two girls now. Joyce and Edna, you can take five. Okay, now, honey, you come over here, please. Right over here, next to her, and open up a little bit. Yeah, give me this, and I'll come in the back. Up again with this. Okay, let's try it once. Uh oh. Hold it. A peeper. Move. See a second. Are you sure you're in the right place? No peepers allowed? Well, hello, Mike. Hi, Max. Sorry to bother you. Well, that's all right, Mike. Any time. Uh, sorry, Joyce. This is Mike Kovac. Mr. Kovac, I'm sorry. I didn't know Joyce? It. Joyce Whitman? Why, yes, Mr. Kovac. Oh, I'm looking for your roommate, Jane Cullen. Jane, she's here on this job with me. Do you have some work for her? She could sure use it. Yeah, she's already working and doesn't know it. When it's convenient for you, Max. Okay, girls, take five. Janie, come here a second, will you? Who wants to talk to you? Jane, honey. This is Mr. Kovac, Mr. Mike Kovac. Hello, Jane. So? Oh. Is this your picture, Jane? Yeah, it's me. 
Is that a crime or something? I mean, don't I have enough clothes on or what? Who are you anyhow? Well, take it easy. I just want to ask you something. Go ahead and ask. I got nothing to hide. Well, what I wanted to ask, I already know the answer to. But were you ever in Belgrade? Belgrade? Where's that? Some place in the Catskills? <laughs> Pretty sure the two guys that employed her are the same two characters that run the bridal office. Told her they were importers of folk dresses, huh? That's right. And to a professional model, it sounds legit enough. How many girls do they use? Just one that time. Each pose in a dress from a different country. They must have about a dozen suckers on a string. As long as they're suckers, they'll be bunko artists. I can't do anything without a complaint. Well, I'll get you a complaint. That girl? No, I told her not to do anything until she heard from me. Now, she's got a mind of her own. You know, she's a fighter, one of those battlers. Lieutenant, I got a gimmick I want to try. Now, Mike, watch yourself. Most bunko men fade when the going gets tough. They don't like the rough stuff. But there's always an exception. And from the way they handled your boy, Metrovic, these boys look like it. Don't worry, Lieutenant. My gimmick involved a visit to the bride's unlimited office. I wanted to get in there and get a modern look at their old country operation. I also wanted to sneak some pictures. A loud old-fashioned tie was the perfect cover for a miniature camera. I had a harness designed to hold the camera and a tie pinned to camouflage the lens. I'd used it before. And if I was lucky, my picture taking wouldn't be noticed. Mark's about due to pay up. Yeah, well, if he doesn't come in tomorrow, I'll give him a call. All right, Buster, I want them all. I beg your pardon, miss. Just what is it you want? The pictures. The pictures, remember? Mr. Smart input of folks' addresses. I want them all. You're making a mistake, young lady. Is that right? That's right. So why don't you just leave? You want me to just blow up and disappear while you make monkeys out of little foreigners with my pictures, huh? Come on, give me. Ed, will you open the door for this impetuous young lady? Who's leaving? If I go out here, do you know where I'm going? There's a social organization in this town called the Pony. Ever hear of them? I got a bulletin for you. They're interested in your type, fella. Look. <laughs> Want some more? Keep it up and we'll fix it so that you don't make any sound for a long time. Let's get out of here. Now, there's no hurry. This chick hasn't been to the cops yet. In two more weeks, we could have cashed in good. I really ought to take care of her. Hey! Somebody's home! Watch her. I'll get it. Hello! My name's Ademski. Ademski, eh? Fowler's mine. Nice to meet you. You put this for paper? This the place I find wife? Well, now, Mr. Damsky, I... All right, it's all right. I be a good customer. Want wife from old country. These women in this country, too weak. Too much ice cream, cake. A Damsky, he work like horse, want woman like horse. But a nice one. 
Well, I don't know, Mr. Adamski. A girl like that's not easy to find and get over here. You know, there's a quota. Wait, wait. Don't tell me about these things. Money, she buy everything, huh? I got plenty money. You get the right woman for me, and I don't ask how. Uh, Mr. Adamski, it just so happens there's a beautiful girl in Warsaw dying to come over here. You know, with the right kind of... Uh, you know what? I might be able to get her on a plane tomorrow. Is that right? You got picture? I sure have. Here it is. Hey, Harry. We got some business to take care of right away. Ed, meet Mr. Adamski. He's very anxious to get a bride. He's been saving up a long time for it. Isn't that right, Mr. Adamski? $3,000. Well, there you are, sir. Her name is Olga Cassano. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, yes, this is nice. This one for me. When? When you gonna bring her? You do this for me, huh? Well, it'll take uh, money to get her on that plane tomorrow. The cables, ticket, you know. How much? You get $1,000 back here in half an hour, and I'll get off a cable. You wait right here. I'll be back. I'll come back. You wait. Are you out of your mind? We can't wait around for that, Mark. We gotta get out of here. Relax. For a grand, I'll wait around a half hour any time. And that girl in there's giving me an idea how we can pick up some more quick. Stay with her. Where is she? Where's my Anna? She's here all right, Metrovic, just like I told you. Remember, one peep out of you and the little man gets it first. Right between the eyes. My partner has a gun under the desk. You hear? Let me see her. First, let's see some of that money. No. No got money yet. I see girl first. Make sure you're not fooling me again. Then I go to bank. All right, you can see her, but that's all. You don't talk to each other until we've been paid for our services. Sure, sure. All right, Mr. McGill, let him see the young lady. Let him see they were honest American businessmen. Remember, one sound and that gun goes off. My bride. All right, get that money up here. But the price has gone up, $1,000. You get it here, or your Anna goes back on the boat. I get it. I get it. If I have to steal, I get it. He's gone. Tie up that doll and tie her up good. <laughs> Relax, young lady, it's easy for all of us. We're gonna wait for both those mobs, Metrovic and Adamski. Why not? They'll be back soon with the money, and we'll be long gone. I have to get back, Father. Now calm down, Jan. <laughs> Tell me again what you want. How can I calm down, Father? She's here, in America, in this city. I see her in bride office. I go now to get money for to bring her home. That's wonderful, Jan. Wonderful. Beautiful. Look, tell Mr. Kovac, please, never mind. Everything all right now. I pay him for time. Not to bother Mr. Fowler now. You tell him, Father. I don't want trouble. All right, Jan, I'll tell him. And you bring Anna back here. Yes, I yes. want to make her well. You tell Mr. Kovac, please. No trouble. <laughs> Now I had another picture of the little model in a foreign costume. I also had some shots of the operators of Brides Unlimited that I had to develop and get right over to Lieutenant Donovan.
The guy named Fowler gave me this picture of a girl. His hands were all over it. So there should be plenty of prints. Maybe pick up McGill's, too. This is what the two guys look like. I took these shots with a hidden camera. I'll put them through right away, see if we get any kind of a make on them. I want to get you forward to Wilby. Where you be? I'm going over to Father Ehrlich's. We got to figure out a way to break the bad news to Jan Metrovic. He's going to take it pretty hard. Do you blame him? No, I don't blame him, but boy, oh boy. Sometimes I think these bunko men are the worst. They don't kill, but they sure torture. But that is what he said to me. The girl is here. He asked me to tell you. Well, exactly where did he see her? In the bridal office. What? That's what he told me. The girl in the picture he saw in the bridal office? He said, don't bother Mr. Fowler. Everything is all right now. Can I use your phone? Well, of course. Uh, Michael, is, is something wrong? Where did he say he was going when he left here? To get some more money. That figures. Joyce, this is Mike Kovac. Well, hello. How are you? I'm fine, fine. Look, I want to talk to Jane. She isn't here. Can I take a message? Where did she go and how long has she been gone? I don't know. She left a note saying she had to take care of something. I think it was about those pictures. Is anything the matter? Well, there wouldn't be if she had done what I told her to do. All right, thanks, Joyce, and goodbye. Well, Jan's mm -hmm. girl is up in that office, all right. Well, then, everything is fine. The only trouble is she's not Jan's type. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes. It's for you. Yeah. Hello, Mike. This is Donovan. We got your boys out of the mug book, all right. Their prints haven't cleared, but we don't need them. So what have you got? They're bad boys, all right. We got a whole book on them. Both of them serve time on the salt. Get around, too. Cleveland and Memphis want them. They're bad medicine. Oh, that's great. There's a social gathering going on up there. A young and a Colin girl went up there on their own, and I'm leaving right now. You wait till we get there, you understand? Mike! Mike! Why did... Get me a car. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000 dollar executive. That's right, huh? Okay. I got no money for a wedding now. Oh, that's a shame. But I have a hunch she's not in the mood for a fancy wedding. I see her now, yes? You see her now, yes. You two were made for each other. Ed, let's bring these two lovebirds together. I tell you not to come. Everything all right now, Mr. Kovac. Kovac? What is this? That's my friend, Mike Kovac. I tell him about Anne. <laughs> Anna! Get him! Donovan, I got a complaint. Assault with intent to murder. Take him down and book him. How is he? He's coming around. Is it all right? I think so. I'll sit in the chair, yeah. That's right, Jan. Just a dream. <laughs> 